Oi, oi, welcome to the new pool area. So we recently finished the majority of the pool area. I thought I would take you through it, show you the pricing and also a few of the problems that we hit along the way and just take you through why we made this area the way it is. And also before anyone asks why we have a finished pool area before we have walls, ceilings and floors, the majority of the outside area here was done by other people. So I could keep going on inside. There was a bit of prep work and a few bits and pieces I had to do, but all this was done by others. So we could get this done before I completed anything else inside. So the pool is five meters by three meters. You can see we've got a couple of steps here, one, two, and three. This main area here is really good for the kids. We had this exact same pool in the last house and it was fantastic. That is 500 mil, so 50 centimeters deep. Once you step down, the shallowest area there is 1.2 meters. And then at the deepest, it's only 1.5. I believe the entire pool is roughly 22,000 liters. So it's not a massive pool. So we definitely could have gone a lot larger in this area, but for this sort of functionality, I think this is perfect for us. We're only after it for basically a plunge pool. We looked at plunge pools in the past and realistically they were coming out the, about the same price, if not a little bit more and a lot more work. I think these are a little bit more solid than your plunge pools as well, as these are concreted into the ground, whereas the plunge pools sort of sit, you've got to make the support around it. I've heard a few different stories, so don't take my advice for it, but um, that's pretty much why we went this. It's also better for heating because it'll cost a lot less. It's a lot less power to heat a small pool. see it fits in there nicely. I did a quick video the other day in my shorts on how I did it quite easily just with a knife. Uh, I think usually they'll cut it but they're just flat out at the moment so uh, I did it myself. I believe we got it from Swim Mart about 400 bucks. A lot of other people are saying Ooh, you can get them off eBay and all those other places. Probably can, I don't really know, but we used this stuff on the last house and it worked really well. So the main reasons for having it is to keep the water in as the evaporation is pretty crazy. Before we put the mat down, I was losing roughly about 20 mils per day. So 20 mils worth of uh, drop every single day. And the other reason is to retain the heat. We are putting a heat pump in and in the last house being the exact same pool and heater without the cover, the heat dropped every single day and you're just constantly heating. Whereas with the mat, it literally kept the heat in all year round. Even in winter, we had the pool running at about 30 degrees, no worries. And in summer, we didn't use the heater, but it just retained that heat and made it a really good temp all year round. So I'll show you how we take this off. It's a lot easier with two people. So usually if you're hopping in, just for a quick dip, that's all we'll do is something like that. But if you really want to take it away, um, we'll throw it up the back or maybe put it under the patio somewhere. You can get the rollers for them, but we don't really want to have a roller sitting up here or the other end. So for all the pool work, we went through custom pools. They're located in Brisbane. I'll leave a link in the description. So the cost of the pool was a little bit over $40,000. And that includes pretty much everything to do with the pool. So the pour, the pebble creek, the cleaner, pump and the filter. All of this was within that price. Obviously, it's going to be extra for anyone to wire it up. I'm an electrician. I got that done myself. So for anyone wondering, the pool lights, it's only one there. That pretty much does the whole pool. That came with the pool fit out and they're just hardwired. So they're actually loose and the cable goes through some conduit pretty much comes around here and it just came to here. I then put an extra bit of conduit, ran it all underground. It's only low voltage as well. Comes into here and into the wall there. This is the other side of that wall. And as you can see, she's just popping out here. That's it there, just low voltage. And I'll most likely throw this onto a switch inside the house. glass fence with the uh, white spigots down the bottom. The fence to buy was $4,000 and the installation was 1.5. These are metallic spigots. 
So we did have to make sure that they are more than 1.25 away from the pool. Otherwise they've got to be earthed. The same thing with the side fence. So obviously this is metallic. So we actually made sure that the pool was away from that. It's not a big hassle, but you would have to earth that otherwise. Talking about the earthing, the earthing was around here. I should have a video with it in it. I didn't get too much of the earthing, unfortunately, but the electrician's got to earth the Rio and then uh, take it back either to the local GPO that is on with the motor that is on the pool pump or take it back to the board. So I test that cable and it was all good and then joined it and took it to the local GPO. It's just in the back there. That was the easiest way to do it. But we haven't done too much in this area yet. All this is getting changed. It's already changed a lot from what it originally was. I made the provisions for the concrete slab. That's at the exact height that the concrete will be through here. And right here is going to be the heater. That's gonna cost us about $5,000 to put in and all the provisions are already in. Should say also, this is a magnesium pool. So what that means is you put the minerals into the pool. As it goes through the pump, it comes through here. I think this is the chlorinator. It goes through there and actually creates chlorine and then uh, pumps it back through. And with it being magnesium, it's uh, quite good for your body and skin, all that sort of stuff. I don't know much about it, but that's what they say. So on top of the actual pool slab, we had to pour around that and that was around two and a half thousand dollars, I think. This is where one of the problems came up. It's not a huge problem, but if you can see, don't mind the paint over there, there's a bit of a slope. So obviously we got them to slope it downwards or um, to the side so that any water will go into the sides there. You can see it over here as well. Just a bit of a slope. So we had to get the tiler to bring it up. Not a huge thing, but it was one unforeseen problem that arose. Um, once again, not a big one, and the tiler did a pretty good job on it. And for those that are wondering about the tiles, uh, we'll get a good shot without all the dirt. They are Travertine Ivory Grip Porcelain Rectified Tiles, 600 by 600. They're 10 mil thick. So we had a local guy come out to do the deck from Millennial Projects. And this is actually the fake timber. It's called Future Wood. I think the color is desert oak. Don't mind all the mess and all the paint on it though. It's, um, we've got to tidy it up and clean it up a bit, but turned out really nice. All the edges are really good. The feel of it's really nice. It does actually feel like a proper timber. The main question I've got about this is how hot it gets. And realistically, it's not too bad in full sun. And this is midsummer. I've had timber deck in the past and it's pretty much the same as any tile or deck. It's really not that bad. And if you're wondering why we went the fake wood over proper wood, I've been there, I've done that. In the first house that we built, we had an area that was roughly three meters by eight meters. Absolutely loved the deck. It was really, really nice when it was done up well, but the amount of maintenance and work that it took to maintain that was just nothing that I want to do again. So I don't know how it'll go in the future. I've heard fairly good things, but we'll definitely see, keep you updated. And I think the total pricing of all the deck and the installation was around the six and a half thousand bucks. And one thing I'm actually looking at doing maybe today is cutting out this bit. As you can see, do not step. There's not much under there because the framework is actually just in here. So you can see I've dug a big hole. I've got to make a nice circle. I don't know how big I'll, I'll go just yet and this is what it's for this palm here unfortunately she's dying that's why i want to get it in the ground as quick as possible that's definitely some advice is wait until you're fully ready to put your plants in the ground before actually bringing them to your house so the wife got a bit excited bought them all got them delivered and they've just been sitting here not in the ground out in the full sun you can see some of them aren't really liking it too much so hopefully i can get that in today I don't know yet. The whole process was really quick from the day they dug it out. I think it was about a week for it to be pretty much done. They dug it out the next day. They put the reinforcement in the next day. They put all the plumbing in and then later on that week they poured it. And then there was a little bit of time in between that, maybe one or two months, maybe something like that. And then the guys came out to pebble crete. And once you pebble crete, you've got to fill it up with water, uh, which is why we had to get all this area done pretty quick because if you got water in it, you've got to have a permanent fence up, which is why we got someone else to do all the tiles and also the decking. And one of the main reasons why we did the timber or fake timber decking at the back, rather than going the whole way with the tiles, which we were thinking about doing was 
Originally here was the old shed, if you'll remember, there's actually a slab under there still that the shed was on. So to get that to the same level as this slab to put the tiles down, it was gonna cost us a fair bit more in concrete and labor um, than tiles. So we sort of looked at it and figured that we could just bring up that level with the timber and it'll cost a little bit less. I wouldn't say it was a huge saving. It might've been just a couple of thousand dollars, but we looked into it and sort of decided that we might change it up with a different sort of texture and color. So what's in store for the future? Obviously all down the side here, we're going to fill with soil and plant all these. So we've actually put in the weed mat the whole way along. And then we're also going to put lights the whole way along. I haven't done any provisions for that just yet. That can come in almost at any time. If anything, what I'm gonna do is take it back to the shed because the shed's gonna get a sub board. I'll be able to run anything off that. So I'm actually thinking about whether I put power at the back here. It'd just be just in case. Oh yeah, and the fence, we painted all of this fence. This was the green. We just hired a spray gun from Kennards. Worked fairly well after the missus figured out how it worked. I was too busy doing the shed, I believe. And uh, she started out here. I wanted her to practice out the front on some grass away from the deck. So as you can see, there was a bit of spillage. But once she got it going, she got all this and all down the side there done in a day. And the color is surf mist. The chairs, I know people are gonna ask about the chairs. Living Styles, I believe it's called. They're commercial grade, $500 each. I wouldn't say that's too cheap, but yeah, the missus made the decision, jumped on it. And obviously they're low maintenance and very durable. They definitely feel like they're gonna last a while. I would hope for $500, but I do have to admit that they are pretty comfortable. I don't know if the missus is gonna put like a pillow or something on it, but that's up to her. And just being that commercial grade, low maintenance, we're not gonna to have to take it inside every time it's gonna rain. We'll worry about degrading over time with the sun. So overall pricing, excluding the plants and all the other stuff. So we're just looking at the deck, the pool, the tiles, the fence, the install, all of that. And I think we're just shy of $60,000. That's also including the heater, which we haven't bought yet. So what's everyone think of the area? If you've got any questions, anything you wanna know about that I haven't covered, I'm happy to uh, answer your questions in the comment section. And also I might even do uh, more of a video later on the rest of it. And if you wanted to see the shed install with all the problems and all that sort of stuff, or anything to do with the renovation inside the house, check out these videos. Cheers guys.